Thank you, John. I just want to say that all this has been done with a team, not alone. Max, that you all know, has been at my side all the time. And the reason why I'm today here is because I will tell you about a dream. A dream that one day every children in Chile will have access to a world-class education school. But for being able to explain in this dream, we have to go 23 years to the past. <laughs> we have to go to that moment of my life when I was graduating from kindergarten. That was the moment that I had a dream. I wanted to become an engineer. And I was able to become an engineer after 18 years of school and university, I was able to become an engineer. After 18 years that were respected for me. Were respected because I had been born on high income. Were respected because I had been lucky enough to go to a private school. They were, were had been respected because I had a family that supported me in any moment of my life. Following my path as an engineer, graduated from one of the best universities in Chile, I applied to Enseña Chile. I applied to Enseña Chile looking forward to develop my soft skills, looking forward to gain an opportunity to go to study to Harvard. But the truth is that being in Enseña Chile during two years gave me the opportunity to learn and to experience how hard it is to be a teacher. How hard it is to be a teacher where you have a system that doesn't support you. And how hard is the damage of that in our students. Being in Enseña Chile changed my life. Changed my life because I met them. I met my students. Changed my life because I meet each one of them. I made this student that for them, being low, being born low income means that between Isaías, Michael, Carlos, Ignacio, and Marcelo, between the five of them, they were expected only one to go to university. The statistics that were broken for them were broken after one year of extraordinary effort and perseverance and motivation 80% of this class is today trying a different strategy every day to go to college. 80% of them have shown that what was impossible is possible with their motivation and their effort and the support. In particular, I want to share with you the history of Cathy. Cathy had the potential to become the top performing student of her class. But there were moments where she chose not to believe. On her senior year, Cathy had been a mother since she was 15. Cathy was smart enough to know how hard it is to go to and through college being born low income. Especially when you have a child. But what makes me be really proud is that after a year of extraordinary effort. She was able to graduate as the best performing student of her class, and she was able to enroll in one of the best universities of Chile. During one year and a half, she woke up at 5 a.m. in the morning, woke one hour to get a bus that was going to take her to school. She was at, that was going to take her to university. She was at university during all day, from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Then she got the same bus back to her house to arrive to, be, to see her daughter at 11 p.m. After this year and a half, she became one of the top performing students of her class at university. But last year, she had to take a year off because she didn't have the money to continue studying. She had to take the year off to save money to study next year. For me, having meeting Cathy, knowing what she go through, and how many times perseverance is not enough, was the thing that made change my life. Today I know that I want to be an engineer, but I want to be an education engineer. 
<laughs> and this didn't happen only to me. This experience was happening to hundreds of teachers in Enseña Chile. This experience was happening to thousands of teachers in Teach for America. And to thousands of teachers around the world. In Enseña Peru, in Empieza por Educar in Spain, in Teach First, in Teach for India, Teach for Australia. There were full of people that was changing their paths of life after knowing and meeting those students. Last year, I came up with a group of foreign senior Chile alumni and Rebecca Snyder, a Teach for America alumni. I came up with them because we share the beliefs and the conviction that it's possible that one day every children in Chile will have access to world-class education. Together, we created CREA. Together, we share the vision that every community in Chile will have access to free world-class education schools. And together, we will build an open enrollment free and sustainable school network in low-income communities led by families and an excellent team, where all the children were fulfill their potential to go to and through college and became agents of change in our society. We will do this over five pillars, five pillars. We will do this working with and for the community. We know that we have a lot to learn from them. And we know that they have to be the principal actors in transforming the community through the school. We will do this knowing that we are the responsibles to give that world-class education. Every teacher in every class will give world-class education to every student. We will do this as a team. We know that it's a huge challenge. We know that it cannot be done alone. We know that we need the help to every person that shares our dream and that shares our vision. We will do this with excellence. Our children deserve the best excellence that we can give them. And we will do this believing. And not only believing, we will do this because we know that every children has the potential, the potential to become the future leader of our country. We were with all these ideas when we heard about KIP. We heard about this charter network of schools in the United States that was proving that impossible was possible. What had been seen in some classroom now was happening in completed schools. Over 140 schools serving over 50,000 students, showing that they were able, even that they were in low income, no excuses. They were able to have better results at the average of all the United States. And what they knew was the responsible was the teacher. They knew that the teacher, with the support of a great leader, was able to make a change. Knowing this and seeing the impact of KIP, we knew that we wanted to be KIP inspired. In Chile, at the same time, we find a community that needs us. We find a community that needs us in Cerro Navia, one of the poorest districts in Santiago, and one of the districts with the worst results in education. It's far low in compare to the average of Chile. And the average of Chile is very bad. And Cerro Navia is the worst. But in the middle of Cerro Navia, in the west of Cerro Navia, there is a community. There is a community, a neighborhood, that doesn't have a school. A neighborhood, during, between the next two years, there will be built over a thousand new houses for young families that they don't have a school. We have been meeting with those families, and we're starting our project together. At the same time, we were able to find supporters. We were able to find a group of people that successful entrepreneurs from the private sector that they were willing to share with us their advice and their resources to help us to start this. 
experts on education all around the world that were believing in our idea and they wanted to advise us to make this dream come true. With all these three things, being inspired by Kid, finding a community that needs us, a friend that supports us, that want to share the dream with us, we will start our first school, Crea Seronaria. Crea Seronaria, a school where through loving and world-class education, our students will be confident visionaries of change in Seronaria and Chile, developing the character and the skills necessary to have the choice to graduate from the best universities. Working together as one with our families, we will empower our students to work as a team to make this happen. We will start Seronavia, a school that will have four values. Four values that have been built over character and strength. Four values that our children will own. Our children will say, we learn. We enjoy learning new things. They will say, we love. We care for the well-being of ourselves and for those that surround us. They will say, we persevere. We do not give up when we face challenges. We face them with enthusiasm. We can. We are able to achieve our dreams with joy, optimism, thankfulness of the opportunity that life presents us. How we will work these values? We will build structures in our school to support these values. We will have a value curriculum. A value curriculum where every children will have at least two times a week lessons about the values and a value curriculum that will be aligned to a reading curriculum connected to the values. We will have a value framework. A framework to follow the development of the character of each student. We will have family meetings. At least on Mondays, Thursdays, and Fridays, we will open the doors of our school and we will invite the parents of our students, their families, to join us on lessons about the values, to join us while we model the values and when we reflect and we recognize those children that are living by the values. And we will have Saturday school. Saturday school that will be connected to our excellent class and we be each Saturday, this will be once a month, and each Saturday will be intentionally aligned to one value. Those Saturdays, the school will be not only open to the families, it will be open to the neighborhood, it will be open to other organizations that wants to be part of this. We will have also, we will start Seronavia on 2015 with 250 students from pre-K to second grade. We will start an elementary school. But Seronavia is not only an elementary school. Because when our first class for fourth grade graduate, we will open a middle school. And when our first class for, from eighth grade graduate, we will open a high school. Like this, we will reach our full capacity on 2026, serving 1,122 1, students. Our full capacity that will be three schools together, elementary, middle, and high school. All of those will be set on up. And we will have clear goals and expectations for our students. We will have achievement goals, and we will have character goals. On achievement goals, we have short-term, medium-term, and long-term. We want to be, in 2018, between the 5% of best schools in the national test in Chile. We want to be, in 2022, on the top 1% of best schools in the National Standard Test in Chile. And after 14 years of our children being in our school, we want them to be the number one students in the country, getting an open door to all the opportunities that they deserve. How we will do this? We will have our internal 
assessments, the ones that will be built, inspired, in map, step, and another assessment that have proved already results. We will track them at least three times a year, and we will have growing goals for each student for them. After 14 years, every student will be at least proficient and over the 60% will be advanced. At the same time, we will have character goals. We want our students first to share the school beliefs and values. We want them to live by them. We want our students to be part active participators in the community activities. We want our students after not only to participate, we want them to become leaders in the community activities living by the values. So when they are graduated, they continue their commitment. We want each one of our graduated students to be a leader in the community, a leader that share the school values and beliefs, and lives like that. Even if our students, they have to move to another region to study, we want to empower them to keep connected with their community. We want to empower them to be leaders and models to all the students that will continue in a school. This will be done following a curriculum that we must do in Chile. In Chile, public schools and charter schools, we don't get a flexible curriculum. We have a curriculum that we must do to get the support of the government. This curriculum has 10 subjects that will go from pre-K to 12th grade. Ten subjects where there are the first four, reading, writing, math, science, and history, are maybe the most conventional, are maybe, uh, in Chile, are the ones that will open doors, because those subjects will be the ones that will be evaluated in national standard tests, and will be the ones that will give them access to university. We have chosen to have a special focus on those subjects, and also on these last four. Every children in Chile must go through art, music, sports, and English. We will let them know that even if they must, this day will be an excellent class. This will be an excellent class that will be aligned to our values. How we will do this? We will have a vertical alignment. During the year, we will have long-term and unit planning. And during the 14 years, too, children in math will learn first grade to be prepared to second grade as so far. We will have a special time for collaborative planning where teachers will be able to have an horizontal alignment. If they're learning in science about trees, during that week in math they will do examples using trees. In reading they will read about the trees that are in Chile. We will also record and communicate the data to our families. We will have weekly report cards to share the advance of the children to the families. We will have a co-teaching program from pre-K and K where the teacher will be an assistant teacher in the classroom and we'll also, through blended learning, we will be able to introduce technology and small group instruction. A small group instruction that will be supported by the parent. We are building the school with bigger classroom to have a space for the parents to be there with their children. And as I mentioned before, we will have Saturday school with a special intention in our excellent class and our values. How we will do this? We're starting one year early with a staff of five people. We're starting one year early with a staff that will be co lead between Max and me. A staff that will be have individual uh, individual roles. I my goal is to recruit the teachers before December, and I also have to continue the fundraising to raise the funds that we still need. Max will be opening the door to build those relationships with the community, and will be in charge of students' enrollment. We hope to enroll all our students before November. We start in March 2015. Bernardita, she's our future dean of instruction. So our future dean of culture. Bernardita 
with this insightful working on the school culture program and the character framework design. We're also looking to hire an officer manager that will be in charge of the charter application and will lead the process of construction of, construction of our school. And we're looking for a dean of instruction that will help us to design our curriculum and to build the details of the rubric for excellent teaching that we will have. Here you can help us. <laughs> if any of you wants to go to Chile. <laughs> All these will be looking always for our three priorities. The first one, we will build a strong school culture. Not since the year one, since the year before. The second one, we will involve and empower the community. And we will have instructional excellence in every class for every children. Our staff for our starting year will be made of 32 people. Over those 32, 19 are teacher and assistant teachers. This staff will be led by a leadership team. In yellow here, you can see. A leadership team that will be led by a school leader. That's going to be myself. A leadership team that will have the responsibility to support all the teachers and staff members of Tres Aronada. A leadership team that will share the responsibility and they will have each one of them, they will coach some teachers. Even our officer manager, he will be coaching at least one teacher because we want that all our leadership team knows what excellence instruction is. How we will support our staff? We have built structures as we did for our values. We have built structures to support our staff. We will have the first instance to support them a summer induction on January 2015. It's going to be a four weeks summer indu induction where we will first align ourselves. Why are we here? We will know each other's histories and we will know the history that we want to build together. We will start working with the community since the summer induction. Part of our induction will be walk through the ski, through the streets, go door by door meeting our students. We will introduce them to the performance management cycle that we will have, showing them which are their opportunities to grow and develop professionally. And we will have, uh, and we and we will have one week for a start our lesson planning. Also, we will have professional development. Every two weeks, the leadership team will recognize which are the needs of the teachers and will run professional development looking for the growing of the whole team. We will have professional reflection where we will go over our data and we will know exactly where are we and how far are we from where we want to be? We will have, as I mentioned before, a performance management cycle with informal and formal uh, classroom observations. And the most important, with three evaluations a year that will be aligned to the results of our internal assessments. We will have, and I think this is the most important, a staff culture survey because we want that all of our teachers are in a place that they feel that they want to be. We want all of our teachers to be in the place that they feel that is the best place to be. We will support our teachers too, giving them a lot of time to plan. Our teachers will be hired for 40 hours a week, and over those 40, they will teach 24. And 16 hours a week, will be for planning and reflecting. All of these will be done inside the, our framework. CFET. <laughs> a framework inspired in KFET and 
and a national framework that our government gives to all the schools. Our framework will help us and will help every staff member to know exactly what is expected from them at every moment, at distraction and at, at a cultural level. Our framework for the first year will not be complete. We will be focusing on classroom culture because we know the importance of investment in our families and that our children know that they are in the place that they are proud of. A place that has high expectations for them. And it will include the teaching cycle because we want excellence in traction. We'll include it because we need long-term planning. We need excellent executing in the classroom. We need objectives with clear criteria for success. We need our teaching cycle to be perfect for our students. Once we became master on these two, we will grow to the next steps. Of course, if we have a teacher that is already a master, we will be always ready and willing to continue supporting. Mm -hmm. With all these, we will start Crece Ronaldo, a school that will be built in the middle of a new community, a school that will be built with and for the community, a school that since the beginning we are working with the community to build. All this side of the school, it includes common areas. This is the cafeteria, this is the library, and these are, they are like, like common classrooms. We are building the school in a way that all this side can be open to the community 24 hours, 7 days a week. Because we believe that if we start since the beginning empowering the community, the community and make them feeling the ownership of the school, they will become the real owners. But we will not know that we have success until the moment that every children in our school is able to say. When I am at school, I feel like at home. And when I am at home, I feel like at school. Because at that moment, we will know that we have transformed not only our children in our school, we have impact in their houses too. Thank you very much.